from MLB Network is our friend JP Morosi, who joins us now from the Battery area in Atlanta. JP, how are you? Thank you for being with us. What has made the Atlanta Braves so tough to beat in 2023? Alana, good morning, and thanks for the invitation to be on the show today. I'm going to start with Sean Murphy, their catcher. He is, in many ways, the driving force behind this Braves team this season, leads the entire National League in OPS. And I want to begin here. His hometown, Centerville, Ohio, he was undrafted out of high school. There were more than 1,000 players taken in the 2013 draft. He was not one of them. He walked on at Wright State, initially thought to be their bullpen catcher. Alana, he is a bullpen catcher no more. Look at these numbers. Four <laughs> RBI last night and a real coach on the field. Uh, that, that was what I heard from his high school coach, Jason Whited, who I spoke with yesterday about what Sean Murphy did as a high school player and what he's doing now, a true coach on the field. So much so, Alana, and so efficient that Charlie Morton yesterday, when I asked him about Sean's style as he prepares for games, Charlie said his, his scouting meetings before the game last about a minute and a half, 90 seconds. <laughs> That is an efficient meeting, Alana. If only all meetings in life oh. would last just 90 seconds. Uh, to get in, get out, we're, we're all, all up to speed. <laughs> and it works, obviously. The Braves right now with the best record in the National League. So, Alana, I say this. For this network, for all networks, all meetings last no longer than 90 seconds. Oh, my gosh. We have to have meetings about having meetings, JP. Sean Murphy, no longer the Sunday day game uh, backstop, if you will. Okay, Tristan Casas of the Boston Red Sox has really emerged as an on-base presence for them. How important is that emergence? Alana, he is one of the most important players in this Boston lineup. His on-base streak was extended again last night. He has a very, very good eye for the strike zone. And so I do think in time... The power will come. The batting average will move up. But when you talk about young players and what you like to see, it is someone who you would hope to have a really good knowledge of the strike zone. And there you see it. Uh, it's it's unique to have a 200-point spread thereabouts between batting average and on base. But when you're getting on base at darn near 40% of the time, you're doing something right. And so I think in due time, that average will come up. The, the damage will increase as well. He was one of the stars of our showcase game last week. Uh, I, I think as the Red Sox have one of the more productive outfields in Major League Baseball, with Casas over at first base, that lefty bat, I, I'm a believer, Alana, that we're just starting to see uh, the very best of Tristan Casas. And I believe that on-base percentage is that calling card that's only, get, only going to get stronger here in the years to come. Yeah, I think we're starting to see the Boston Red Sox that we thought we might see this year as well, JP. Okay, switching our focus now from the Red Sox to the Texas Rangers. It looks really like the offseason rotation rebuild and just their offseason moves are also paying off. Am I fair in saying that? You are, Alana, and they are the first place team in the American League West. I think it's really important that we celebrate and note what has happened there for the Texas Rangers. Our own uh, Nate Burns did a great job of researching this topic when I asked him, hey, when was the last time the Rangers led the division this late in the season? And Nate's answer was outstanding. He basically said, well, this is the first time that they've been this late in the season leading the division since they won the division back in 2016. And in fact, over a period of six years in a row, they spent exactly one day in first place. One day in six years, Alana. And now they're leading the division here in the middle part of May, and it's really because of what you just saw on the screen there. Their, their rotation getting better year over year. We've seen Gray have some really good outings. Martin Perez, Nate Evaldi has, has been really important. Of course, Jacob deGrom right now is on the injured list. So that's one concerning note, but Dane Dunning has stepped into the rotation. He's done a tremendous job both in the bullpen as more of a bulk guy. He can also start as needed. So we, you talked and documented and did a great job of, of talking about the, the discussion about the Houston Astros rotation. The Astros have lost all this talent from their rotation while the Rangers added, it seems like, that same number of starters on the plus side. I'm beginning to be very bullish about the Rangers' chances to sustain themselves as a playoff team here in 2023.
I hear you. I'm calling it the Bruce Bochy effect. I thought this team was going to be much better this year, and they're proving us right so far, JP. Okay, thank goodness Aaron Judge is back with the New York Yankees because it has been absolutely a, a situation where they have been decimated by injury. But you need to manage the workload for Judge, apparently. How will Aaron Boone do it? You know, Alana, that's a great question. I think probably one of the most important things that Aaron Boone has on his plate right now is how often Aaron Judge is going to be in, in the lineup as potentially the right fielder, but also you can mix in some DH days. I, I do expect that we'll see him DH a little bit. The good news is with Harrison Bader coming back and playing some center field that you don't have to worry about Judge playing center field as much. That, to me, was a huge reason why Judge was the clear MVP choice in the American League last year. It was that a majority of his starts last year came in center field, the tallest center fielder ever. Well, you're seeing now the impact uh, of without Aaron Judge, their runs per game dropped exactly by one. And again, we talk about what's what's the value of a player, how do you measure it? Well, at least over this short amount of time, it's a run a game that, that when you have Aaron Judge in the lineup versus not. So I think that for the Yankees is a huge element. However, they can keep him in the lineup every day. Do they have to have some days as a DH, of course, with Stanton on the IL that becomes more possible for the Yankees. But I think a lot of right field DH combo, and as long as Bader stays healthy and plays a good center field, you maybe keep Judge from having to, to have that high taxing job of running around center field there at Yankee Stadium. Well, JP, you're right on because Aaron Judge, we were just told, is in the lineup today as the DH. So planning on seeing him, the more, them, him there more, as you mentioned. JP Morosi, we appreciate it. Good luck on the call tonight. The Red Sox and the Atlanta Braves right here on MLB Network.